All right, well, we're going to start working on stuff today here. Basically just working on more physics stuff. So, it's a game development stream. If you have questions, just post them. Otherwise, we're just hanging out, working on, working on, working on Dashkin. So, let's see, what are we doing? Well, one of the first things we gotta do is we gotta figure out how we are organizing some of these entities into different pieces of physics information because we have different physics lists uh, different collision groups and we know what our entity type is we need to we need to make sure all of our physics objects are set properly So, let's do that. So let's see, when we create an entity, we've got, or we set the entity, and what actually has the type of entity? Because all entities here have a specific type. In this case, these are the types. We've got terrain, enemy passable terrain, player passable terrain, players, player projectiles, enemies, and enemy projectiles, effects, and then like unknown and uncategorized stuff. So knowing basically when we created an object, that's the type it is, um, we, need to, we need to actually set the collision fields the collision groups for each of the sub physics objects so like the physics box of a player can be can interact with the terrain but won't interact with like player passable terrain so you can go through stuff you know if there's like a gate or something that you can go through that you'll be able to just walk right through so we have to go Remember where the heck all that stuff actually is. So it looks like basically we've got our entity actor, and our actor should know what type it is. So, and our actor type might change at runtime, so we're going to we're going to need to add it here. So it's going to start off as a certain type, and then it, it might change. So we've got our uh, our dash can entity types. This is going to be our entity type. 
And when we spawn with nothing, we're going to, to do dashcam entity constants. We spawn up. We're going to be of type unknown. So enemy type unknown. And then we're going to want to be able to change our type. And we're going to need to be able to get it as well. So let's see what we got here. We want to be able to fetch it, so get entity type, and we want to be able to set it. So set entity type. And we're going to do this on the actor because the actor kind of owns everything about the entity they're working with. So let's go ahead and get this set up. Getter is pretty dead simple, but the setter actually is going to have to. We're going to have to figure out what we're doing there. I think we're going to have to go grab all the components that are on our entity and make sure that their physics objects, if they exist, are set to the proper collision groups based on the type of the physics component. So let's go ahead and return that type here. And some of these are going to need to be U functions, aren't they? Because our blueprint's going to want to look and see, like, well, this entity is of type blah, so we need to do blah. So let's make sure we actually go do. New type. Alright, so if m type equals new type, we'll just return. Otherwise, we're going to need to do work. So. Changing entity type from blah to blah. Type and new type over here. Just adding some log messages because, well, we're gonna need them. Just because debugging sucks if you don't give yourself any any breadcrumbs to follow. Thanks for the follow, Zdox. How's it going? How was your How was your day? How's the How's the sound level working out? Is too much music? Too little music? And does the picture look all right? Because I changed a lot of the settings. So if something's coming through all messed up, let me know. Alright. 
right, so we're going to need to do an entity. We need to grab the data off of this entity. It's got mesh entity. It's got entity data. Yeah, it's a get entity data. And then the entity type is just public variable. So. Alright, cool. Well, then I could just bump that up a little bit. Playing one of the one of the Twitch approved streaming playlists on Spotify. So set the entity type. We should probably set the entity type before we do a whole bunch of craziness. And if our entity is null, we're gonna set our entity type to unknown. Or unknown entity. So to do, we need to search components or physics objects. Yeah, well, very good. Touch loud? Alright. That makes sense. I don't have a good baseline for any of the things, so... Just still getting the rhythm of streaming anything. Alright, so that should be the entity type. We're going to set it on startup. That's good. All of our components should be attached as soon as we're done here. Pretty sure. So what did I even call all this stuff? Put it in like paper flipbook. It should be in the component, I believe. We are creating physics stuff. Well, it's got the uh, it's got some basics, but it doesn't say a whole bunch in OBS. So let's see, flipbook changed physics state. So what happens is we go through all the child physics components, which are U paper physics components, and we are recreating the physics state. Is that what we're doing? Uh, basically, I put in a bunch of stuff here where it detects like, if the physics object has actually changed um, with a bunch of different hashes and stuff like that. Like it hashes all the different variables like the exposition of a box, the extents of the box, scale and all that stuff. And if that hash doesn't change then it doesn't do anything. So recreate physics state is Yeah, we have a collision mapping. And where is recreate physics state? Now, recreate physics state is. Thing. Re yeah, recreate physics state is on the. If I remember properly, it's part of like you scene component or you primitive component. It's like refresh physics state. Yeah. So that's what we're kind of looking looking at at the moment. So I'll need to make sure I'm looking at that. So where we're actually doing this is in component refresh physics. So let's uh, 
paper physics component. Let's see what we did here. Got our debug stuff in there, and we got our body set up. And our paper physics component has a flipbook and a body setup. So the body setup is the actual like stuff. And we have an object code and a hash and all that stuff. So the body setup is the actual geometry that's like the physics stuff. And what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to grab all of these U primitive components, and then we're gonna need to know gonna need to know what this object is supposed to be. So what in the hell did I leave myself with for figuring this crap out? Because it's been, like I set all this stuff up like maybe six weeks ago or something, so I, I have completely forgotten by now exactly where everything I need is. But that's fine. We'll just have to go find it. So let's crack open fat sack here. Um, so basically, the, you can see the physics components that are on there. So we drag a fat sack into our scene. And let's see what he's got over here. We've got a logic controller, movement controllers, all these things. We have a body that's basic junk. Play. Is this the right fat sack? Yeah, that's him. Exactly what we're setting here. So we've got these child physics components. So this is the body physics box. Um, so the identifier string looks like the identifier string has the type in it. So this identifier string is what we want, but we don't just want an identifier, um, since we're not going to want to be switching off of strings. Do we add something else here? Like what's the, um, the identifier, the object code is this, and the object content hash. So we're going to need to add to this, what is the collision map? Collision channel to a number. Sorry, just trying to get my bearings back from like <laughs> when I was working on this a long time ago. And um, what the hell I was doing. Because basically, like, we've got a map of the actual things, we got the channel. So we have an identity code, and the identity code you know, the collision channel map is okay. So we have these identity codes. Where the hell do these come from? That's the object identifier code on the actual paper sprite collision object. So Oh, that actually found it. Here it is. So the object identifier code is the thing. And where do we actually set the object? Because I'm starting to come back to me a little bit. The 
object ID code is the hash of the object identifier. So let me just crack open one of these character files real quick and I can show you what I'm talking about. So when we import a character, like we got Fatsack here, and we've got all this frame data, and we've got all this. The object identifier is a hash of this. So object identifier is like hit, fizz, and it's an FNV32 hash. So basically, we need to set We're not actually going to be going over our primitive components, it looks like. It looks like what we need to do is grab our paper flipbook component and we need to set our collision map on that component. So set collision channel map, yeah. So we need the collision channel map, which is going to map these identity codes to these collision channels. So what we're going to need to do is we've got, we've got different things set up. So. I need to make sure I've got all the right numbers going on here. So let's pull up in the art file and make sure I have all the different types. So we got hit, we got body, and I think we have attack. So basically what we're going to need to do is these maps are going to look something like this. So we're going to have a map for each one of our types of these things. Um, so like terrain, we're going to need this map so it kind of looks like um, fizz is going to translate into this collision type. So, where the hell are the collision types? Is it in physics utils? Yeah. So here, here are all the collision types. So like, terrain is going to actually need a map to ECC uh, game trace channel 2. And like, body for terrain is going to need to map to that same trace channel. Well, terrain just doesn't really have a whole heck of a lot. So it's it's fizz, hit, and tag. But for somebody like player, these, these things are going to map to something else. Like, we've got... Yeah. We got these three right here, so it's basically gonna look like look like this. Hello, Johnny Utah. We're just uh, I'm working on Dashkin and C++. We're trying to rig up some of the physics physics channels properly so that when we're moving around, our characters are using the right channels and if we switch from like an enemy to a player or whatever that we're hitting the right things when, um, when we move around. So what I need are I think what are we doing for these maps? We're, we're setting these maps specifically so what I probably want are static maps for each one of these types because we're not changing like what ch trace channel like physics for a player means we're just we're just gonna make it so we're gonna need these maps we're gonna need them for all the types so why don't we just go ahead and get started making those and why don't we just make them by hand You here to learn something? Well, be be prepared to be disappointed. I'm not teaching you anything. All right. 
let's see. We are making some static maps here for these guys. And they're going to be based on the different types. So I'll try to rearrange this a little bit so I can see what the heck I'm doing. So it's going to be this uh, unknown object map. <laughs> so S uh, enemy passable terrain. And if we were working on a more complex game that had tons of different teams and all sorts of stuff, we wouldn't be able to to do all these different, you know, kind of, we're kind of hard coding different collision types and all that, but that's going to really help us with efficiency and segregating stuff later, so, so we're not going to be, stuff's going to run pretty well since everything's nicely separated. Projectile map, enemy map. Projectile map and black map. Now there's terrain, is there environment? Did I forget a group here? I may have forgotten a group. I think I am. Let's just, uh, say I'm like almost positive. And this is, I think this is kind of hacky that we're throwing this stuff over kind of in a Global physics utils, um, static objects. It's not probably the best idea in the world, but that never stopped anybody from doing it. And it's not going to stop me. Basically, making some static variables, and then we got to go declare those static variables, and then we need to go initialize those static variables. So what I'm going to do is also do a static pool as initialized for these things and I'm going to make an initialize function first for like physics utils and then we're just going to like call our physics utils for all the things like hey give me a map for this entity type it'll return the pointer to the map and all that good stuff and you object you objects like this, uh, physics utils, get created at the kind of the startup of the program. So we're going to be assured that this is going to exist before anything else in our world exists. I'm surprised I didn't already have this set up, but it's not really surprising when you think about it. Because I was trying to figure out how in the hell to actually do a lot of this stuff we wanted. Because Paper 2D doesn't, Paper 2D, 2D for um, Unreal supports a lot of things, but it doesn't support everything we wanted, like it's good at playing single animations and things like that, but we need lots of animations and physics layers and all sorts of stuff. So pretty good for like flying a spaceship around, pretty bad for um, a more complex game. Let's go ahead and fill out our All the, all the things. So I'm gonna need my 
hashing utils. Where the hell are my hashing utils? Serialization? String? Where did I put it? There it is. Hashing utils. And we've got our FNV32 hashes. And we're using FNV32 hashes just because they're quick. And we aren't. We don't have any more than like five things rolling around, so we don't have to worry about those hashing collisions. So let's get our. We could be kind of messy here. Dragon Ball Super when it's like hit, hit, go. Let's see, hit code, attack code. Attack. Born of a satanic curse, it brings to terrifying life the so, vengeance. So, we are going to add the depraved desires of the damned. I think I've got all this stuff defined in a decent place, so let's. Evil elevator and train? How do you know the elevator's evil? Has it got spikes on it? Alright, so for our unknown object, we're gonna make everything train? Nah, let's do something a little bit smarter than that. Let's set it to... Static. If we have no idea what it is, we're just going to make it world static. Alright, so what's the next map? It is terrain. So, for the terrain map, everything is going to be ECC terrain. Because it doesn't matter if our terrain has a body, it's just going to be the terrain. Because um, terrain's not going to be stuck. Terrain's not interactable. It'll be an environment object. It's an it's a hel elevator. Ah, very good. So enemy passable terrain is still just going to be all terrain. That's pretty easy. Player passable terrain. Wait, it's not going to be terrain. It's going to be freaking player passable terrain. Enemy passable terrain. I should also put in like a maybe a default code here for like we're gonna add a zero code for everything just so if we have a fallback for these like somebody adds a new um, physics type and misspells something in in our or we do something crazy we'll at least have something to fall back on. In fact, why don't we just unknown code toothy suction monster what the hell all right so player passable terrain is done let's do the player map So, for an unknown player map, we're just going to say player body. Uh, it's going to be player body, player hit, then player attack. Player 
projectiles. Player projectile body, player projectile hit, and then attack. It's pretty funny. They used to think that uh, back when like programming first started, basically everything was so tedious and repetitive that it was thought that programming was going to be a job that women did more primarily than men because it was so tedious. And back then, it was basically you would have um, you know secretaries and all that sort of stuff. And this is like the '60s or something. So that's why you see like those old TV shows or whatever, where they've got, you know, like a whole bunch of secretaries and then they have like this big computer and all that stuff. They, they used to be the, the thing. And it hasn't really turned out that way. Much like if you saw some of those articles, like people like, ah, oh, Bioware is hiring too many, too many men. Enemy map is gonna be enemy body. Enemy hit, then enemy attack. So enemy projectile. Then we have the effect map and. Do we even have an effect channel? Hmm, what are we gonna set it as? We've got environment bodies and hits and all that stuff, but I don't see effects. So we're just gonna say the effect effect map is just gonna have like world something in it. How about world dynamic? Just just for the hell of it. What? <laughs> oh, nice. That guy looks pretty awesome. Looks similar to um, one of the one of the characters that we're working on. Let me pull that up. Yeah, this is one of the characters uh, for one of our hack day projects. Kind of reminds me of that. He's got like the kind of the armor, the armor style going on. <laughs> this guy. He's <laughs> got the awesome glasses. I think your guy has cooler hair. That's for sure. They're like all the like the armored knee pads. That looks. That looks pretty. That looks pretty gross. It's like a head crab that <laughs> head crab on steroids. Alright, so we got the effect map, and it looks like we also did forget to add um, a few things. We need another group in here. We need the environment group. And the question is, do we have environment projectiles? We just have environment stuff. Okay, so. So we'll need to regenerate our code here and add a new group here. We need to call it environment. Let's pull up our, our awesome 
Code generation. Option 7, this thing. We've got code generation hooked up with a free marker. So basically, we can edit data like this. And then what we do is we have this generated template stuff. So I've got like these entity data things here. And I think it's entity constants basically like this entity group of enums in here will just be auto generated based on all the groups I throw in here so I don't have to I don't have to rewrite the code I can just go to dash can entity constants and the entity group their environment got added with like all the bells and whistles Pretty handy if you need to change all the things. Otherwise, you're usually stuck like editing strings in a in your code, which is which is fine for a lot of things. But then you have like a bunch of bunch of issues where you accidentally misspell something, and that's never good. Because you'll be like, oh well, what we had to do was we had to hook all these things up, but I spelled it wrong. Like somebody had armor as like a an equipment type or something but you know you got somebody from Britain and they're naming it you know armor with a U and then all of a sudden all your game data is all screwed up because somebody went through and changed it all that's never happened to me before it's never happened at all we never had an intern that did that we never had to, to ridicule that person constantly Alright, so we got all our maps set up, so what we're going to need to do is now get our maps <laughs> from our physics utilities. So we're going we're gonna to create a new function here, which is going to return a reference to the T-map, and it should be a constant reference as well. So we're going to say get collision map for type. And the type that we're going to throw in there is going to be this uh, entity group. So, entity dash community group. And watch me just like have already made all this crap and then like later figure it out and be like, why did I waste all this time? It's all good. You can play. Also, if anybody has criticism of my uh, my coding style, like that's 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 fine. I don't care. I've worked with so many different people, and everybody does everything differently. And I work for myself now, so. I can do whatever the hell I want. <laughs> Alright, so get collision map for type. We're just gonna do a simple thing here. We're gonna switch off of the group type and snag this thing. And this would be some. This wouldn't be an awful idea to actually have auto generate this portion, but there's only so much auto generation I really wanna do murder myself so we're just gonna mandralicize the hell out of this for a little bit here and we'll be fine Let's also do a default there and return that. 
So the cool thing about this is also that you are always guaranteed that you get an object back. That's not always what you get. That looks wrong. That looks wrong too. Alright, so we need the terrain map. Enemy password. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know, Adam. Endless. We, we've had endless fights over coding style. I was like, no, we need we need braces on the new line. You're like, no, that's that's ridiculous. Why would you think that? And then I end up throwing chairs, and it's just an ugly scene for everybody involved. It's a good thing we're not in the same room. That's that's all I gotta say. Because I end up. I end up breaking things. Let's see, player projectile map. There it is. Enemy map. Just a normal enemy map. Just like it's highlighted. Of course, of course I can't see it. It's freaking highlighted. Alright, so we can now retrieve our maps for all of our different types. So that's good. I wonder if we should also have like a. We should auto generate something else as well. Like, uh, we've got our groups here, but do we have collision groups? Let's go, let's go take a look. Because we've got like physics there, so game data. We got logic, movement. Doesn't look like we've got anything crazy. So we don't have physics and all that stuff. Ishu, thanks for the follow. How are you doing today? Physics in here, I think. And do a physics JSON object with uh, physics. Let's make sure to add this to version control. So these are going to be physics uh, object types. And what well, we've got. Let's just say we've got none, we've got fizz, we've got hit, we've got attack. So we'll just make these well-defined things here. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, that was always the joke when I was uh, like working at Amazon. They're like, "Oh, Kirk has an opinion about something." I'm, I'm shocked. I'm so surprised that that he has something to to say and complain about. <laughs> this is gonna be another enum. So, is this gonna be an entity constant? I think that's close enough to what we want. We're gonna add these up here, and this is gonna be E um, Dashkin uh, Physics Object Type, and kind of the notation here is the folder name, so Physics, and then the name of the file, so Physics, and then the name of the actual object in the file that I can reference. I'm gonna do it as Physics Group. And what this will do after regenerate is we'll have another enum there, and then we can just like go edit the, the enum and add and remove physics object types and all that. 
and regenerate the code. This way, somebody who is not a not an engineer can actually go and like if we want to. Let's say we've got a, a new character in the game or something like that. And we want to add one, we can just you know, edit one of these guys and uh, regenerate the code. And then in all of our drop downs and all of our characters and everything, you can go reference that. It's like a real, fully qualified type in Unreal that you can just click on and, you know, there it is. So if we go over here, as you can see, we got our physics object types, um, and they're all set up here nicely for us. And what we're going to do is we're going to create another one here, which is instead of getting getting something by code, we're going to want to get something by because um, we're on like get collision map for type. That's fine, but we're going to want to get like collision channel for physics object and we want to pass in like the code for the object but we also want to be able to pass in like the actual type so we want to grab the physics object type here This is going to be for physics code and for physics type. Well, the game's coming along. We don't have a whole heck of a lot at the moment uh, to show off, but we're working on that. another map here and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a map of object types to codes. So this is going to be the object code map. We'll go ahead and create the object code map down here. And we're going to add the object types. So. The code for none is going to be zero. Is hit and attack. This is going to be the fizz code. The code. That's that code. This is not going to be returning. Yeah, it's just going to be returning the collision chain. So let's fix that. So again here, and U functions can't be called the same thing. I would have liked to have called these things the same, but. All right, so what are we going to do here? We're going to get the collision channel for the physics type. So it's going to be, we're going to 
gonna grab the codes. The code is going to be so tight. And then we are going to return, get collision, channel for physics code, and grouping code. And then this guy is going to call the collision map for type. This guy has got, let's see, what's T map got on it? Oh, yeah, thanks, Unreal, for that awesome CSS there. Is there a contains? Alright, yeah, so it's got a, it's got a contains function on it. So, if contains the code, then we're going to return maps of code. Otherwise, we're going to return maps of zero, um, which is the unknown code. Which, if we're going to use it this way, we should probably throw it in some sort of some sort of constant. We'll throw an unknown code here. I have had the I Ching manual for 12 years. If I had not mastered it by now, I'd regard myself as an idiot. That's annoying. So, unknown code. So we've got our collision maps for our groups and our types and all that stuff. So over in our entity actor, we should be able to go ahead and snag that. So we should just be able to call get collision for type. And we should be able to pass in and type. Our collision map, and then we need to call on our paper physics component. No, not our paper physics component, our paper flipbook. It's like set collision channel map. Yeah. Make sure we actually have a um, this is on the flipbook component right there, so we're just gonna say if in flipbook component is a little pointer, then we're gonna call that. So that should set our physics. Um, the question